Hey, good morning, family. Pastor Artie with your men and coffee this morning. You know, Matthew 13, verses 2 through 8, it tells us this. Now, you may all be familiar with this. It's the parable of the sower. It says, And a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that when they went off of the ship, they sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake to them, unto them these parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some of his seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured it up. Some fell upon stony places, where it had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, but because they had no depth and deepness in the earth, they, when the sun came up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and when the thorns sprang up, they choked them out. But others fell among good ground, and brought forth some fruit, some one hundred, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. He who has an ear, let him hear, in verse 9. Weeds. That's what he's talking about, the thorns. You know, I was just out here in the garden, I was doing some weeding around our berry bushes, and our watermelons, and, and pumpkins, and you know, there's a lot of weeds, and they come out of nowhere, just out of nowhere. Doesn't matter how well you prepare the soil, they always pop up. It never seems it's a never-ending battle to keep the weeds away from the flowers and the plants. But you know, I was thinking about this parable as I was out here this morning doing this, and I was thinking how much our lives are like that. You know, we that have accepted Christ have had the seed fall on good soil, we hope. And I say we hope because there are those out there, and I've heard this by many pastors, who sit there and say, you know, some dress the part. You know, they can be in a three-piece suit and their hair's perfect and they smell good and they look good. But you know, inwardly, they're like the, the parable of the, of the tomb, you know, where their outside looks beautiful, but the inside it's rotten. You know, it doesn't matter on the appearance. It says that God looks upon the heart, but man looks on the outer. For me, I got that switched around, but you get the gist. Men look at how you look. You can be all tatted up, you can, you know, you can be in a t-shirt and blue jeans and tennis shoes, and you just don't fit the part of what they call church people. And I've seen this so many times. I mean, I've, I've been in churches where they say, you know, we wear a coat and tie. Well, I told them, you know, I don't wear a coat and tie, and if I wear a coat, it's with a t-shirt under it. So, I just don't fit in, I don't fit their mold. But you know, good fruit springs forth and brings forth good fruit, good seed. And if the seed is falling on your life and you're good seed, then you will produce good fruit. But remember, there are weeds and thorns out there that want to spring up all around you and try to choke you out. Try to stifle the message that you have to give. Yesterday we talked about our message our testimony. There's people out there that want to choke you off and keep you from sharing that. And it's the weeds of this world that is the world itself that Satan uses to choke you down. Remember we talked about in, in some devotions past about Satan is the great suggester. That's the only power he has over you. If you're a born-again Christian, he can only suggest and put thoughts into your head. So if you're feeling down and you feel like, oh, people are saying this or people are saying that, and you just don't know where to go, go back to the Word. What does the Word tell you? You're good seed on good ground, and you need to bring forth good fruit. It's the ones that it falls on the stony ground and it doesn't have much soil. It grows in and it sprouts up real fast, then the heat comes out, it dries up, and it dies. Or it falls among the thorns, and the thorns come up and it entangles them and chokes them off and kills them. That's what this world wants to do. That's what Satan wants to use this world for, to choke you off, to keep you silent, to keep you saying, well, as Christians, we shouldn't be involved in politics. As Christians, we shouldn't be involved in public matters. As Christians, we shouldn't be involved in our community. As Christians, we, as, 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 I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. The word says, you produce good fruit. So you get out there, you have a testimony, open your mouth, share it. Let people know you are a Christian. And what they're doing is wrong. It's okay to say it's wrong. You know, if they want to run to their safe place, their crying closet or whatever, and they want, they want huggies and they want their little comfy binky like my son used to have, 
let them have it. That's cool. They're entitled to it. If they don't have the guts and the fortitude and the strength that we have as Christians to stand on our own two feet and make our voices heard, and they can't do it, that's no problem. But you notice, they always do very well when it comes to shouting down your message. Haven't you ever noticed like the Atifa people and, and all these other liberal groups, I mean, you know, they get out there, they don't know how to talk, they don't know how to discuss things with you. They know how to yell, scream, cry, holler, shout. They do anything but be quiet, and you know why? It's because they don't have any more intelligence than that. They really are mental midgets because they don't know how to discuss it through, how to get their things on the table for people to discuss and say, hey, you know what, maybe you do got a good point, or maybe you don't have a good point. I'm willing to listen, just don't yell at me. Just like I hope you're willing to listen to me. How would it be if I sat here and I just screamed and yelled this whole message out to you? Would you continue to watch it? You would turn me off faster than you could shake a stick. But God says his gentleness, it says in Romans 4, 2, it's his kindness that leads them to repentance. You know, there was a movie called um, uh, Roadhouse and Patrick says he told his, his coolers, the guys, the bouncers, he said, no matter what, be nice. No matter what, be nice. That's what we gotta do. As Christians, we need to stand our ground, we need to say what our faith tells us, but we need to be nice. Be nice about it. You don't have to get any yelling at us. You don't get, have to get into verbal altercation. The Word of God is true. It says, my word will never return void. It's sharper than two any, any two-edged sword, and it will divide to the bone and to the marrow. It will cut deep. Because when people are confronted with their sins and their stupidity, it hurts, and they have no other retaliation to act like children and scream and yell and throw temper tantrums. They remind me of little three-year-olds laying on the ground, kicking their arms and feet. What needs to happen, God needs to stand them up, give them a good, quick, swift boot on the butt, and tell them to get going. But we can only do that through the world. I don't suggest you pick them up and give them a swift kick in the butt. But, you know, let the Word of God do its work. It's powerful. So today, family, don't be like those seeds that fall on shallow ground or thorny ground. Be the seed that falls on good ground. Let your testimony be known. Make your stand. Don't be afraid. You're a Christian, and you have a right to let your feelings know when things hurt you or upset you. You know, we want to continue to lift up the families of Molly Tibbet, and that this, they just lost their daughter. You know, we pray for justice to be done and that those, the guy who is charged with the crime will stand trial for it. And that it won't be an issue of his immigration status or whatever, he is a murderer. Plain and simply, under the law. And he broke the law in the United States, so you know what? You guys can have at me if you want, but he is afforded due process of that law. He is in our country, and we should treat him as a criminal and try him as a criminal and give him his day in court and let the jury decide. That's fair, and that's a godly thing. God gave us our Constitution. He moved upon the men of this country, our founding fathers, and used this word to help form the framework of our Constitution. And anybody that's gonna tell you different is a liar. They spent all night staying up, struggling over this word to grab a document that would give us the freedoms that we're afforded by God in this country. They wanted to be different. And, you know, just like Daniel, they dared to be different. Today, I'm challenging all of you guys to dare to be different. Stand up. Don't bow. No compromise, guys. It's time for Christians to take back that which the cankerworm has destroyed and Satan has stolen from you. Take it back today. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all of us to make a stand, to let our testimony be known, to live your life as good seed and bring forth good fruit into this world. And when the naysayers rise up and they want to scream and yell, let the truth be known of your word to them, that you love them, you died for them, and you rose for them, to give them newness of life. And this world, Satan says, you know, he's, he wants to destroy it. He wants to destroy it. He wants this world. He wants all of you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, put a hedge of protection around the battle. 
Keep our minds and our eyes closed to the things on the outside, but open to the things that keep us looking up and heaven bound. Father, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You have a blessed Friday, guys. Linda and I hope you have a blessed weekend. The staff here, we're praying for you to make your stand today. No compromise. Dare to be Daniel today and dare to be good seed that will bring forth good fruit. We love you and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.